Prakash, hi, afternoon. Uh, any thoughts on uh, Chola? Uh, good afternoon, uh, Prashant. So I think it's it's an ace management in in probably one of the best segments of pockets and and has such a strong leadership position. And uh, you know, if you see the the dispersals that were so strong, I mean that the book is growing so robustly. That's a very positive sign uh, for for any company which is into this business. You know, the the margin pressure, which is uh, thanks to the cost of funds, will continue. But remember, uh, these businesses have an impact, a negative impact of increase in interest rate, which is front-ended. You cannot pass on the uh, high prices immediately when your cost of fund goes up. But when interest rates start softening, which, you know, end of the cycle, you probably continue to gain the benefit of higher interest rates uh, on the lending, whereas your cost of fund will start uh, softening very dramatically. So this is this is the nature of the beast. So there's nothing very different about uh, the, the numbers. There's no surprises, unpleasant, so at least. And what, what seems like happening is that the management is focused on a growth rate, which is much better than the last uh, many quarters averages. Now, in, in, in a company like this, if they can do that with the kind of, uh, you know, clean lending that they've always been known for, I think you'll, you'll probably see some very strong numbers coming in the next three, four quarters. And that that's exactly why this stock is kind of smartening up in spite of numbers, which are just about right. Uh, nothing very spectacular. But I think it's a boring business that will pro pay you off in the long run very well. All right, uh, Prakash, uh, you know, you track Tata Motors very, very closely. But I just look at the Tata Motors stock, even today, it's virtually unmoved. But the Tata Motors DVR, well, that's doing a you know whole new dance altogether. And the last one month or so, clearly the street is sniffing something. Any view on the DVR? Well, Nigel, good afternoon. I think it's very simple. Uh, the market loves to, you know, I mean, all this fancy something which is, uh, which is uh, kind of opportunistic. And and the DVR was giving you that uh, the arbitrage was too significant, the discount was too significant. I and I remember you pointed it out very uh, in a very studied way uh, some time back. And and you know that's that's the whole idea that you have a stock which is going to have ups and downs given the kind of volatility in numbers in margins, you know, what's happening in Europe and some of the other geographies like China. So it was bound to be volatile, but the DVR gave you a little bit of that cushion because the arbitrage uh, was was significant, the discount was significant. And that's exactly why there's more demand which is now coming in for the DVR. Uh, I don't know about that special thing that uh, the market is sniffing, but I think the, the discount will continue to narrow uh, as the popularity grows and and you'll still be able to ride on the benefit of the underlying right so so that's that's looking positive given the cv sales and all those robust numbers that it clocks if you don't have any disappointment uh, from china anymore uh, i think tata motors will probably continue on a very strong footing sometime early jan uh, feb is my guess because that's when the reopening of china is anticipated and and don't expect fireworks till december at least in the, some of these stocks in the auto pack Okay, all right. Uh, Prakash, one more question I wanted to ask you on a couple of these pharma names. You know, yesterday we were highlighting about uh, Pyramid Pharma. Uh, it was under pressure, but that was because the MSCI rejig was there. And that's why the stock was down. There was massive volumes. Today you can't buy it because it got locked in upper circuit in the first hour itself. And tomorrow it comes out of T2T. Uh, have you had a look at this one? And the, you know, either this one or you could comment on Gland Pharma as well. That was at a fresh 52 week low. And it's bounced up a little bit, but there are various concerns out there as well. So let me take land first because it's simpler. It's a no. Uh, I wouldn't want to put uh, allocate any money uh, to land Pharma given its uh, yo-yo and, and, you know, so many promises that haven't uh, actually been delivered, right, on the execution side. So uh, it, it's it's always something which, and it's always been very, uh, traded at very high premiums, Nigel. So you your, your margin of error is significant out, uh, you know, very low out there. So if you can get uh, washed out very easily if something goes wrong. On Pyramal, I think post-listing, it's this is a very interesting case study where you know that there is a very strong uh, pipeline, there's a very strong API element, there's pedigree which is uh, tracking there. They've been raring to go at this business, uh, uh, you know, thanks to the non-compete thing so long. All of that was very positive, but technically the, the listing happened at a time where things were probably not looking as positive for pharma, and hence you had that uh, subdued kind of a pricing. But that is kind of getting out of the way. This MSCI exclusion also is something which was more like an overhang, which is out. So once all that is out, fundamentals take over in a significant way. And from that perspective, I think it still holds value. 
from the long term portfolio you will start seeing pyramal pharma feature in a lot of institutional uh, uh, portfolios in a significant way uh, right now the percentages might not be very high it's only organically whatever you have but people will definitely want to switch into this uh, as as it kind of matures as a stock but uh, for retail investors uh, the the uh, best thing to do would be to add on to this uh, on dips not on a day like this when you know uh, there's too much of exuberance around the stock and this will pivot uh, after some time this will probably wane out after some time that's when you need to probably look at the stock okay by the way just watch some of these stocks reddington is reacting to its numbers stock is up 9.5% very strong q2 numbers revenue growth of 25% profits have gone up 26% and this is much higher than street expectations ifl's estimate was the revenue growth would be about 10 to 11% because reddington does get a significant percentage of its revenues from the export market and they thought the weakness in the markets would weigh on the growth uh, metrics but it's a 25% revenue growth from reddington versus ifl's estimate of about 11% so that stock is on fire uh, you've got ifci which is now locked in an upper circuit of close to about 20% there was an earlier a note from bloomberg where the government according to that note on bloomberg the government is planning to infuse 2000 crores in ifci and merge the company with the unit and since that announcement has come through uh, you know the stock has been seeing a lot of buying realtel lic irctc lemon tree hotels uh, elwise financial services so many of these stocks are seeing some big moves in the last uh, you know 10 minutes or so we'll